Hello, Jock. Good morning, my friend. Thank you for being so patient. I woke up a little bit late today, and you even let me watch my awesome YouTubes. You even uh, got captivated by the carpetbagger being up at the uh, abandoned ghost town in the sky, didn't you? You love that video. So now I'm going to get my shower, finish up my coffee, and you and I are going to hit the road. You ready, buddy? Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, the mail came already. Pretty early for the mail, even. Pretty cool. My aunt sent me my birthday money early since I didn't know I was going to be not able to work all month. So, a little bit of help towards uh, paying my bills. And then my buddy Vinny Roth sent me some music. He sent me, um, like, a bunch of, uh, like, jazz covering the Grateful Dead, reggae doing the Grateful Dead, bluegrass tribute to the Grateful Dead, all kinds of cool new music to check out. The coffee that my mom sent, my favorite chocolate cherry celebration. It's definitely going to be a celebration in this house. So I got like, uh, I think like six or eight new bags of coffee. And then my new watch came. And you're probably thinking, another watch? Well, I sold one of my Lego watches on eBay. A viewer of this show asked for it, said, would you consider selling it? I'd love to have it. And so I did. I found this beauty for $1.25 online. And the reason I got it is because I work all these catering events and just all my watches are a little bit too flashy for those events. And I just thought, well, this is one if it only costs $1.25. I don't care if I break it or not. But it actually looks pretty cool. Pretty psychedelic. I like it. Well, the hand's feeling a little bit better. Mainly it's just the finger. The finger's the one that hurts the most now. I can, uh, I can bend it and everything. But um, every once in a while I'll do something I can feel a stitch like kind of pull or whatever so until those get taken out it's still going to be a little painful and I can still feel my middle finger where I can definitely tell something was done to the nerve because every once in a while I'll be sitting watching TV and I'll just feel like what feels like a string pulling on this finger like I'll feel like the nerve or a tendon or something getting tight and like pulling towards it well we're out and about for the first time today doing the jaw walk and I just wanted to send a heartfelt thank you out to everybody that watched yesterday's vlog um, anytime you take a risk and depart from what's your normal vlogging style, you're opening yourself up for criticisms and complaints and I don't come here to hear about your life and stuff like that. And so I appreciate everybody enjoying it. I didn't have one complaint about it and uh, it's just something I felt the need to do. Um, I know that I have families, entire families that watch my vlog together, and I want um, the young kids, as well as the older people, to know that, you know, you, you are allowed to rethink things in your life, you don't have to live with regret, you don't have to uh, be afraid to take chances, and even me, at 35 years old, you don't have to be afraid to try something new, start a new venture. I mean, when I had my very first job out of high school, I worked at a computer factory, and I didn't know anything. I literally got hired and knew nothing about computers really. And the guy right next to me was 65 years old. Had been a uh, he had been a uh, union leader for Panasonic in our town, and Panasonic had shut down and left him without a job. And he was starting over at that age, and just taught me then that nothing is ever definite. Um, you always have to make changes in your life, and you always have to go with the flow and I just wanted to do that. I just wanted to tell you guys that little story, and that wasn't like a uh, a cryptic, like, oh, I'm pining for that girl, or like, I'm trying to get her back. It, it, not that at all. That it was. It was just like a. Um, it was just like she has a boyfriend now, and she seems really happy, and that makes me happy. Like, I love to see people happy, and it was just me saying, like, you know, it's funny how you think about how different things could have been, or what changes your life could have you know like the butterfly effect if you know anything about that like the one little one little thing in your life can steer the rest of your, the direction for whatever reason and uh, so that's what that whole vlog yesterday was about I hope you guys enjoyed it this guy is supposed to go over to Pollyanna's at some point today and uh, I think I'm gonna ride along with them over there and I'm gonna do the vlog over there today because there's something there's an apartment actually there's like two apartment buildings side by side 
they kind of have a story. And I've been thinking about doing it for a while, and I think after yesterday's vlog, I think you guys deserve kind of a fascinating, unique story. And this is definitely that. So hopefully that'll be what we do today. Quit smelling the pee. Be a gentleman. I know in a previous vlog I showed this getaway van, but now this is just creepy. Because look what's in the, uh, hanging from the rear view. Or from the, yeah, the rear view. Green sunglasses. I think I know who owns this. All right, we're out and about. Let's go do some vlogging. There's the uh, Hollywood Tower again. Hard to believe Disney created an entire ride based off of the look of that place and then dismantled it. Bummer. But. I actually probably will ride the new Guardian of the Galaxy ride that it's been taken over by. Giant. Now where we're going today, I've actually walked past numerous times in all the vlogs that I've done, especially on my way to Runyon Canyon. But what we're gonna see today is two properties that actually have quite an interesting story. One of them is the former apartment of Charles Manson. Now where we're going today is actually just to the left of the Sister Act Church right there. Well, here it is. One of the former apartment buildings of one of the most notorious serial killers and conspirators the world has ever known. And somebody that everybody lives in the United States, has heard about their whole life. In 1959, a young Charles Manson lived in this building. And actually ran a prostitution and topless dancer ring out of here. He called it a talent agency and went by the name Three Star Enterprises and his room was actually 306. Now what I noticed when I came up here was that 303 was directly ahead of us. And so I peeked through the doors right here before I started the video and I noticed that off to the left on the second floor, you had 203 over here and then off to the side was 206. So what I've surmised is that Charles Manson's apartment was actually this very last one here on the corner. And he was actually arrested here twice in the time that he lived here. His apartment would have been uh, this one on the top with the doors open. And I wonder if the people that live there now know. Now what's also pretty fascinating is that this was a building that he used to actually have a lot of the girls live in at the time. And um, what he was mainly servicing was uh, people over at the Roosevelt Hotel. So this was literally just like two blocks away from the Roosevelt Hotel. And he could get the girls over there in a timely manner and check up on them. But this isn't exactly where the story ends on this corner. Because then 10 years later, he would be involved in a crime that happened right here in this parking lot. So let's go take a look. At the time, Charles Manson's apartment building was called the Bienvenue Hotel. And over here, right here in this parking lot, was an apartment building called the Franklin Garden Apartments. 
Tex Watson came here on a night in July of 1969 to sell drugs to Bernard Crow. The guy went by, Bernard Crow actually was known by the family and by most people in LA as Lots of Papa. That was his nickname, Lots of Papa. And he was supposedly, or at least rumored to be, a Black Panther, remember the Black Panthers. And um, what had happened was Tex Watson tells in his book that he came here to sell uh, Bernard Crow drugs and stiffed him. He actually took the money, which was reportedly $2,500, and then went out the back way. And he actually said when he was inside the apartment um, that he could see the Magic Castle out the window. And there's the Magic Castle right there, which I thought was pretty interesting. So, Bernard Crow was obviously pretty angry that he'd been ripped off and uh, had sent word around town that he was going to get revenge. And Charles Manson found out and decided he didn't want trouble with the Black Panthers and he didn't want any trouble to go any further. So he actually came here and uh, shot Bernard Crow, attempted to murder him. And Bernard Crow pretended to be dead and laid there because he said he knew Manson was just crazy enough to where he would want him dead, you know. And uh, so he laid there, pretended to be lifeless until, uh, until Manson left. Now what also is pretty fascinating is that years later, um, when the trial is going on, was it probably two years later? Because this was, this attack happened very shortly before the Tate LaBianca murders happened. So when the trial actually started happening, the prosecutor found out that the gun that Bernard Crow was shot with was the same gun that had been used in the Tate LaBianca murders. So he made an offer to Bernard Crow that he would pay for the operation to get the bullet removed. And they wanted to use that as evidence because Bernard Crow didn't want to testify or chose not to testify. Um, in the end, Bernard Crow also decided not to have the surgery because they said that um, it was a little bit more of a touchy procedure than what he was comfortable with. There were some risks involved, so he decided not to go through with it. Um, which is unfortunate because that, I mean, talk about sealing the deal. But um, they said that Bernard Crow actually went to the sentencing of the Manson family and Charles Manson and did speak there. And when he was leaving the courtroom, he had passed Charles Manson in the hallway as he was being taken out. And that was the first time that they had actually seen each other since Manson thought he was dead. And uh, Bernard Crow reportedly like glared into his eyes and Manson just flippantly said, hey man, no hard feelings. But it's pretty freaking ironic that a site of where he would try and kill a man 10 years later would be right next door. <laughs> right next door to his old apartment building where he would run a prostitution ring. Right up there in that window. Apartment 306. You almost felt like we were in San Francisco there for a moment, didn't you? I will never understand how I constantly walk past just one shoe. How do you lose one shoe? Or just leave one shoe behind? There's the old Knickerbocker, one of my favorite vlogs. It's amazing all the things you have to walk past just to get to Subway. Well, here's pretty much all the Beatles. Paul, Ringo, George, John. And then the lost Beatle, Roy. But, whoa, sorry if you're getting motion sick. There's Joan Crawford, 
And uh, let's say hi to Shelly while we're over here. Now Shelly told me she wanted this star over here because it was close to her old teacher, Charles Lawton, who is uh, right there. And Shelly is right here. Well, Lionhearts, have a great night. Hollywood, California, good night.